helpful uh, base heat shield and even leeward side heat shield. Uh, it, it, is, it sh should be uh, really not significantly affected by a fireball. So it, 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 could, it, it could quite literally, like something out of Star Wars, fly right out of the fireball. Um, um, so that's, uh, obviously we want to avoid, avoid doing that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it, it is really meant to be something that can fly out of the fireball. Um, and, um, you know, there's maybe, maybe a few points that are worth mentioning that, in, 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 you know, how is Dragon better than some, some uh, you know, what was done, say, during the Apollo era. Um, the fact that the uh, launch board system is integrated with the spacecraft, um, w with the Super Draco uh, thrusters in the sidewall, means that uh, you have launch board capability all the way to orbit. Um, and whereas previously, uh, with the launch escape tower, that, uh, because it's so heavy, that is, that is discarded uh, often just you know, 20 or 30% of the time into flight. So shortly, not, not long after uh, uh, liftoff, the typically launch escape tower, um, which is a sort of the historical architecture, would be discarded. So you would lose the ability to abort after that point. Um, whereas Dragon has abort capability all the way to orbit. And then um, if you have a state change, anything that's a significant state change post liftoff is something to be concerned about. And not having to, to uh, to eject the launch escape tower, I think, is also an improvement in safety. So I think those two are uh, significant uh, steps in the right direction. Uh, there's also the an, an improved ability for reusability. Since you're not throwing away the launch escape tower, you, you retain the, launch, the the Super Draco thrusters. Um, that uh, you, you now you can, you can now reuse that the, the the launch escape system with every flight because uh, it, sh it should hopefully be very rare. That, that that the escape thrusters are are used, um, so that um, I think those three those three points are um, a meaningful uh, improvement over over designs in the past. Um, and then one one of the things we uh, obviously this requires um, on, uh, ongoing discussions with 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 NASA, but I think it would be quite quite cool to use the. Uh, the boats that we are using to catch the fairing, once that is is really well established, to catch the catch dragon as it's coming in from uh, from from orbit, um, and then that would uh, alleviate some of the constraints around a water landing, um, and um, but, you know, that that's obviously it's, 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 there's some time before for making that happen, and we obviously need to re recover uh, fairings reliably before we would consider trying to catch the uh, catch the dragon. Uh, but I think that would be also an improvement as opposed to landing in the water. And, and if I can just add one thing to what Elon's saying, you know, one of the most important things is that we, that we're monitoring the vehicle, the launch vehicle, to make sure that you're recognizing when the launch vehicle is having a problem so that the abort system is working, right? So we've spent a lot of time together talking about, you know, how does the spacecraft monitor the launch vehicle and then make sure that it's going to abort before it starts getting into those situations too, right? So all the things Elon's kind of like icing on the cake and additional, the spacecraft's robust, it can handle, you know, these kinds of situations, but, but more importantly, we're getting the crew away before, you're, before the launch vehicle is in a position where you're having to expose the crew to the fireball, right? So the, and everything he said is absolutely accurate. There are huge advantages to integrating the launch abort system into, into the spacecraft itself. Um, and and that, those advantages are we can abort all the way, all the way out to almost space. Uh, the downside is it's, it's, it's engineeringly, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to achieve. And of course, we learned that back in April yeah. uh, when we had some, some oxidizer go into the pressurant system and resulted in a catastrophic loss. Um, but, but that's why we do these things. That's why we test. And because of the way we're acquiring this, we have very innovative partners that are uh, doing things that have never been done before with a purpose. The purpose is to ultimately save lives, drive down costs, and increase access to space. So all of these things are working. It, it is absolutely true that we will have setbacks as we learn these things. But it is also true that we are going to be better off for it. Um, and of course, what Kathy said is, is absolutely true as well. Um, you know, this spacecraft knows precisely where it is in space. 
latitude, long, when I say space, I don't mean outer space, I just mean in space in general. Uh, latitude, longitude, altitude, yaw, pitch, roll, trajectory, velocity. It constantly knows where it's supposed to be and it knows what's happening to it. And so it can make a determination early, before the explosion were to happen, um, to, to, to execute the launch abort capability. So I think we're, I think we're where we need to be, um, but it hasn't been without pain. Uh, and, and going forward, we're going to be better for it. Great.